Hello and welcome to this VBA for Excel intermediate tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll be going through a couple of ways of using VBA code to make decisions. There are two main structures for making decisions using VBA code. Many of you will be familiar with using the if worksheet function in Excel. If statements similar to these can be used in VBA code. However, VBA also provides an alternative which is the use of select case statements which are exclusive to VBA. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to create a macro that will display a message telling the user of the price of a ticket. However, as the price varies depending on the age of the user, the macro will first ask the user for their age and then select the correct price dependent on their age. The first thing we're going to have to do is open up the Visual Basic Editor. So I'm going to go ahead and press Alt and F11. Now we need to insert a new module into this workbook. So I'm going to right click on the project name here, go down to insert and select module. Finally we need to give our macro a name, so I'm just going to type in sub ticket price and then a set of empty parentheses and then press enter. Now we can get started with coding our macro. The first thing we need to do is to get an input box to display telling the user to enter their age. To do this, just type in input box followed by a space. You will notice that this little caption will pop up, displaying the various properties of this box that we are able to edit. The active one is the one that is highlighted in bold, in this case the prompt that the input box will display. So to edit this, all we need to do is type in please enter your age in a set of quotation marks. To move to the next property, we just need to type in a comma, and you will now see that title is highlighted in bold, indicating that it's the active property. So to edit this, just type in a name you want the title to display in a set of quotation marks. I'm just going to type in age query. As these are the only options that we need to edit, I'm not going to enter another comma to edit the next property as you are not required to edit all of the properties of a function. Now, it is a good idea to test your code as you go along, so I'm just going to press F5 while the cursor is active anywhere between these two sub-statements. As you can see, an input box does indeed display with our intended title and prompt. However, you will notice that when you enter an age and press OK, nothing will happen as we haven't finished our code yet. The next thing we need to do is assign the age that the user enters to a variable. To do this, we need to type the variable name and an equal sign before this input box function. I'm going to call the variable age. Now, if you press F5, you'll notice that we get an error. This is because if you want to capture the return value of a function, as we do in this case with the user's age from the input box function, you need to put any arguments of the function in a set of parentheses. So, I'm just going to enter an open parenthesis here and a closed parenthesis here. Now, if we press F5, you can see that the input box function once again works as planned. However, notice that when you enter an age and press OK, there doesn't seem to be any way of checking if that number was stored in the variable age. However, we can use the immediate window to do this. If you haven't got the immediate window open, which should be located at the bottom of the screen here, you can open it by pressing Ctrl and G. Now that it is displaying, there's one more thing that we need to do before we can get it to display the value of the variable, which is to pause the macro after it has stored the value in the variable but before it ends. So I'm just going to type in stop here. Now if we press F5 you'll see that our macro is still running as before. However after we enter an age and press OK you'll notice it has taken us back to the Visual Basic Editor and highlighted where the macro has been paused. Now we can make sure our variable is storing the age correctly by going down to the immediate window here and typing in print space age 
and pressing enter. And as you can see, it has returned the value I entered into the input box before, so we know that the macro is working as intended so far. So I'm just going to press F5 again so our macro is fully executed and then delete this stop. The next step is to get the macro to select the correct price based on the user's age. I'm going to use three different age groups which will be under 18, 18 to under 65 and 65 and over. So for example if the user's age is 14 then the price is 10 pounds but if the user is 32 then the macro will display the more expensive price of 15 pounds. The first way I'm going to go through doing this is by using if statements. So on this line I'm just going to type in if age the sign for less than 18 then price equal sign 10. As you can see if statements are pretty intuitive to use. All this is doing is checking if the variable age is less than 18 and if so it is making the variable price equal 10. Now I just need to do this with the other two age groups so on the next line I'm just going to type in if age the sign would be greater than and an equal sign 18 and age the sign for less than 65 then price equal sign 15. Notice that there are two checks in this statement as we need to make sure that the user age is equal to or greater than 18 and under 65. Finally on the next line I'm just going to type in if age the sign for greater than 65 then price equals 5. Now that our macro is selecting the correct price based on the user's age we just need to get it to display the price to the user and I'm going to use the message box function to do this. So on the next line I'm going to type in msg box and then in a set of quotation marks the prompt that I want the message box to display which is the price of your ticket is and then a pound sign just before the final quotation mark. Now we need it to display the variable price so I'm just going to type in an ampersand and then the variable name which is price. Notice that this is not in a set of quotation marks. Now if we test our macro by pressing F5 and then enter an age such as 22 and press OK you will see that it does indeed display the correct price of our ticket in a message box. However just to be certain that it's working I'm going to run it again but this time enter a different age such as 99 which is in the higher age group and press OK. And there we go our macro is operating as planned. Finally I'm going to quickly go through an alternative way of doing this which is to use select case statements. So firstly I'm just going to delete these three if statements but leave the rest of our code as it is. So on this line I'm going to type in select case and then the name of the variable that we want to test which is age. Then on the next line I'm going to type in case 0 to 17 as this is our first age group and then on the line beneath it what we want to happen if this is the case which is the price to equal 10. Now I'm going to do exactly the same for our next age group. So on the next line I'm going to type in case 18 to 64 and then below it price equal sign 15. Finally on the next line I'm going to type in case the sign for greater than and an equal sign and 65 and then press enter. You'll notice it's automatically changed case to case is as this is technically the correct way of using this statement we're not using a range 
as we did it in the first two examples. Now I just need to type in price equal sign 5 and then finally an end select statement on the next line as there are no more cases. Now if we press F5 to test our macro and then enter an age you'll see that it's working just as before. That's all I wanted to go through in this tutorial. I hope you found it useful and if you have any problems or questions feel free to contact me.